Hello everyone, my name is Atel Esparza. I'm a senior studying material science and engineering here at Lehigh University, where I also conduct research in the maths group under Professor Sido Pimpicar. Today, I will explain my work in designing and creating a novel synthesis apparatus for the growth of copper benzene 135 tricarboxylate, otherwise known as CUBTC. CUBTC is a metal organic framework, also referred to as an MOF. MOFs are porous materials composed of metal ions connected by organic ligands, which can be seen in figure one. These structures tend to be crystalline with a high surface area, and due to their tunability through pore size and ligand exchange, they're attractive for use in various applications, ranging from electronics to environmental remediation. Due to many of these properties, CUBTC has been found promising in gas storage and carbon gas sequestration. However, the primary obstruction in implementing CUBTC in devices has been the inability to grow high quality crystals larger than a couple of millimeters. To understand this limitation, we must examine the synthesis methods used. The most popular and promising method is the solvothermal synthesis method in which solvents and solutes are in a closed system that is raised to a temperature above the boiling point of all the solvents. The essential components here are the ligand, organic ligand, and metal salt precursors, as well as the solvent. To optimize this method, groups have studied the dependence of the pH of the solution and the temperature on the growth of CUBTC. This prior work gave us a synthesis recipe to base our work around. To begin our exploration, we reproduced a hot plate synthesis recipe from reference number four, which included using copper 2 nitrite, water, and trimesic acid as our solutes, water, ethanol, and dimethyl formamide, also known as DMF, as our solvents, and lastly, using glacial acidic acid as our modulator. The modulator is meant to slow down the crystallization process to allow for crystal nucleation and controlled growth by temporarily binding to the solutes. The synthesis procedure can be seen in figure two. We reproduced this method twice. We had an open system that was not leak proof the first time, which meant we had solvent evaporation. This first run produced small blue green powdery crystals. The second time we did the run, we put a rubber stopper on the top of our beaker allowing us to create a simulated closed system. This leak-proof run produced much larger bright, bright blue crystals, which indicated a higher quality CUBTC crystal. We verified this by conducting X-ray diffraction on our leak-proof run crystals, and we got results that showed we had CUBTC, specifically the HKUST1 MOF we were aiming for. This verified that limiting solvent evaporation, also meaning an increase in pressure, is critical to bulk crystal growth. We also observed that in both runs, the crystals synthesized only at the bottom surface of the beaker, indicating preferential growth at the heat source. Alongside these experimental growth runs, we began to design our synthesis apparatus. The mechanisms of this apparatus can be seen in figure 5, which shows a SOLIDWORKS rendering of our autoclave. The mechanical design of the autoclave is from prior work conducted in our group. However, ours is optimal for our growth parameters of 500 Kelvin and 5 MPa, which were set by the partial pressures of our solvents with respect to temperature. We also designed our autoclave using HAST alloy C276, due to its corrosive resistance to glacial acidic acid up to 500 Kelvin. And its mechanical, mechanical strength, which withstands the safety re regulations and requirements at this high pressure. So far, we have been able to verify that CUBTC can be synthesized using a solvothermal recipe. We also observed that a closed system grew larger crystals. Our next steps include fabricating the autoclave and safety testing it up to 500K and 15 megapascals to have a safety factor. This will then be followed by reproducing the hot plate synthesis recipe in the autoclave. Once this is achieved and we produce the same or better quality CUBTC crystals, we can work to optimize conditions, which can include temperature, pressure, or even change in recipe 
to maximize crystal size and get to our goal of that centimeter ranged CUBTC crystals while maintaining the high quality. I want to take time to acknowledge and thank the Lehigh University Material Science Department for their resources and support, as well as, well as David and Lorraine Freed for giving me the opportunity and platform to ed educate you all and speak on my research. Thank you so much for listening today.